Martin Richman, welcome to the stage. Is this for? No. Mine's dead. Uh, my first intermingling with cell phones, as I thought about it, was back in the mid-90s. And of course it was work-related, because that's where it must come from, they make that leech. <laughs> and then I thought, you know, I got my first cell phone right after Jerry Garcia died in 95. And I thought, okay, man, so there's this time in my life where I have a cell phone, and then everything before that, I was basically just a deadhead. I managed All to right. catch... I managed to catch about 82 shows over 16 years. I think my first one was in Charlotte in 79 when I was in high school. My last one was in 95, right before Jerry died at RFK. I saw this great country from Orlando to Chicago, New York to San Francisco, and the Deer Creeks and Baltimore's and Roanoke and Hampton and Raleigh, remember that one? Charlotte, Atlanta, Oakland on New Year's Eve. And there were these three shows in Sacramento. So me and my buddy Joe, we fly out of Raleigh in the spring of 93. And we head to Sacramento and we're going to go catch three shows. We fly into San Francisco and hook up with some friends and we head up to Sacramento and we're going to Cal Expo, which in California stands for State Fairgrounds. We had three shows lined up, nine people. Cal Expo was completely empty except for deadheads and there's like 100,000 deadheads out here. It's like a campery, massive place big as it could be, camping everywhere, people everywhere, it's a wonderful thing. We decided that on each night two people were going to go and get in the general admission line with the blankets and the coolers and wait, go in when the gates open, set us up blankets and party spots and such and wait on all the friends to come in. So Joe and I decided we're going to do this on the second night. And we get in line and we wait and we're having a good time. We get inside. Everybody finds us. We have a great show. And then when it's over, we're walking out and we're hustling up through the crowds and I turn around and I'm like, man, where's Joe? We lost Joe. So I get up with my friend Mary and I say, hey man, we gotta wait. We gotta find Joe. And she says, no. He'll just meet us at the car. And I said, no, you don't understand. We got out at the entrance to get in line. Joe don't know where the car is. And this place is massive. She goes, oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so Matt says, well, look, dude, if he gets lost and we can't find him, he can just get a cab back to the condo. And I said, dude, we're in fucking San Francisco, San Sacramento. All I know is it's yellow, it's got a pool, and it's near a freeway. He don't know where we're staying, man. He has no idea where we're parked. And all of a sudden, we're looking at each other. And I said, man, we got to find Joe. And we got a problem. And this was before cell phones. So there was no way to get up with him. So I'm like, all right. So we start walking around. They tell me where they think we're parked. And I said, well, look, man, I'm going to start walking around this massive place and I'm going to find Joe. And I start walking around and I'm searching. And everywhere I'm, I, as I'm going through, and I'm at this, this massive parking lot and I'm looking and I'm looking at everybody. Is there Joe? I'm just looking for Joe. And then after a while I realize that everybody thinks I'm a cop. I'm like, okay, man. That's kind of fun. So I'm going to have some fun with it. And I start just walking up to people going, Hey, have you seen Joe? And they kind of go, Joe who? And I go, Joe, my buddy. No, what's he look like? Hey, he's got brown hair and he's wearing a Grateful Dead t-shirt. <laughs> of course, everybody kind of 
looks like this. But then one thing I noticed, the most I got, everywhere I went and I said, hey, excuse me, in my southern drawl, have you seen my buddy Joe? And most of them go, where are you from? <laughs> I went, okay, and I kept checking. And then I realized I basically look like a dumb redneck cop checking everybody out. And I'm thinking, okay, man, if I'm Joe, I'm going to go get something to eat. And there's this massive area way back in the back where there was a, basically a glorified food truck radio, except they were school buses and VW micro buses and such. And I go wandering back here, and I find the Burrito Boys, the Taco Chicks, the World Peas Hummus, the Once You Go Mac, You Never Go Baccaroni and Cheese, <laughs> Kind Burritos, Kind Veggie Burritos, Kind Veggie Tofu Burritos, Kind Water, Kind Bud, Kind Brownies, Kind Hugs, Kind Beer, but there's no Joe. That's oh man. I'm an hour and a half into this and I gotta find my buddy. So I go to the disco bus, which is a great big school bus with big speakers and they're just blaring disco music in the Grateful Dead parking lot. And they got hippie chicks on the top of the bus. And there was this one little cute hippie girl in a tie-dye mini skirt up there dancing on the bus. So there's a big ass crowd around here, right? And I'm kind of looking around and I realize, okay, I'm not going to find Joe in here because there's like a thousand deadheads here. An hour ago, we were all grooving and shaking our bones, and now we're all out here getting down to KC and the Sunshine Band. So I head on. I'm like, well, let me see if I can find the parking spot. So I wander for what seems like about another hour, and I actually find the parking spot where we're at. And there's all my friends. But there's no Joe. And they seem to, I think, have forgotten that, you know, we're looking for Joe, man. we got to find Joe because he's lost. And I wander on a little bit. And I'm heading to the South 40, as I called it. And I'm starting to think, man, maybe if we just wait, we could be the last car in the parking lot. And then he'll find us. But this shade ain't going to end until Friday. <laughs> and then I actually started thinking about, well, I'll have two seats on the flight back to Raleigh. As I'm wandering around looking more and I'm asking and I'm doing my thing and then I come to the sexy grilled cheese bus, big blue school bus. They made it to every show. Big blue school bus with a banner, sexy grilled cheese, two dollars, which is a pretty damn good price and you get a pickle. So I'm standing here, and I'm kind of bummed, but I'm also the dead show, so I'm not that bummed. I'm eating my grilled cheese, I'm hanging out, and I'm watching all these people just going back and forth. I'm thinking, man, I know he's here somewhere, and I'm going to find him somewhere. And I finish up my grilled cheese, and I turn around, and I look at these two guys working there, and I said, Hey, by the way, you seen my friend Joe? And this one guy looks at me, and he goes, Are you Martin? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I am. And I'm looking for my friend Joe. He said, he's on a mountain bike down there riding around looking for you. <laughs> and I went, ah, cool. He said, he talks like you. <laughs> All right. So I go wandering down. I run into Super Dave, another friend of mine. We called him Super Dave because he looked just like Super Dave. <laughs> if you remember him, which was way before cell phones. And I'm talking to him, lo and behold, here comes Joe, riding up on a mountain bike, eating a burrito. And I said, hey, dude, I've been looking for you. And he says, I'm so fucking lost, man. I can't believe I've been all over this place, man. And I went to the food, I went to the disco bus. Did you see the chick in the miniskirt? I said, yes, I was there, I was looking for you. We wind up taking the bike back to the whoever he borrowed this from. We stopped by the disco bus on the way back to our parking. We hooked back up with our friends, and that's what life was like 
before you had cell phones. Y'all be cool.